base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now leading the on all of us. Understand how the bad things, the negative things, understand how they happened to us and what happened and recognize that we never lost our goodness, we never lost our innocence. What, was, what happened is we were traumatized in such a way that it put us off of balance, off of center, and it distorted how we perceive ourselves and then how we perceive reality. Because I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> is a new infusion of energy. And I think that that energy comes from clear, coherent use of our intelligence. These things that we say, we, we respect spirituality, then respect our intelligence. Use it clearly and coherently. Take care, that, that is our spiritual responsibility because everything that we create in this reality, we manifest it through how we perceive reality. We manifest it through our intelligence. Now, I don't know, oh, I'm gonna read. Oh, and the other one I wanna put out here because you see, uh, not trying to start anything. But Obama did a really good job of imprinting certain brainwash illusions in the, in the consciousness of the people who were desperate to believe. All right? Because I noticed what was interesting, the phrase hope or change, hope, and you can believe in it. You can believe in it so you don't have to think about it. You can hope for it, so you don't have to truly act, all right? And the change, nothing changed, all right? The skin color of the predator reptilian that is running the show, all right? <laughs> That's all that changed. But you get to the basic behavior pattern, nothing really changed. And I want to go to this because, see, I, and I know I'm tre treading on fine lines here because hope and believe we got a lot tied up invested in that you know we're putting a lot of our energy into that and i think it's feeding it into a, a void but hope pandora's the gods gave pandora the box of evil told her not to open it because it had the seven evils of the world in it and it had hope the pandora went ahead and opened it so the seven evils of the world came out and then hope came out and the gods said well hope came out that's to help you cope with the evil no, it's the box of evil, and hope came out of it. No, basic reality is not the box of evil and hope. It was the box of evil. So it makes me think, well, what's the role? What's this hope thing? What's this whole concept? It's like a sedation. It's like it sedates our thinking process. If I'm going to hope, it's like waiting to be served. You know, there are times when we say, I hope this, and we could say, I trust or I pray. Things that activate the thinking process. Things that activate the thinking process. See, and I, I say this at different times, you know, and I, I know people just basically blow me off because, you know, it's like we're addicted to the concepts, the words, and it's easier to, you know, feed the habit. But a lot of times we use words out of habit. See, and when we use words out of habit, not truly understanding the vibra vibra vibratory reality, vibrational realities to them and the meaning to them, then we really don't understand what we're saying. It, it's the language, it's distortion of sound and change, altering of vibration. So we should understand the sounds that we make. You know, I put these out there like democracy, right? You know, right? Step up. Democracy. Hey, you know, democracy. What does it mean? It means the right of the entitled <laughs> to have their majority rule thing. Democracy. We need to go beyond. This is what I'm saying about non-cooperation. We need to think outside of what they gave us permission to think about. We need to think like human beings for the welfare of the earth and for the welfare of the coming generations. We need to think outside of the prison that they have put our minds into. We need to understand the language that we use a little bit better. You know, and if you look at it, because it's theoretical democracy, it's not, when, it, when it's practiced the way it's supposed to be practiced, then that's the utopia. No, democracy does exactly what it is supposed to do. It creates an illusion. 
It creates an illusion that you got a voice, that you have a say. It creates the illusion, see? And then by the time your grandchildren catch on, see, it repeats the same re illusion because, you know, you know, you can tell the same lie over and over and over. And they trade the illusions of progress. Understand this. There's an industrial ruling class on this planet. They own democracy. They own socialism. They own fascism. They own communism. They own it all. They own every bit of it. You go to any one of these societies, any one of them, and they have a ruling class. And they do have a ruling class. They have a privileged class. They have a privileged state. They buy, their, they, they buy from the industrialist. They plunder, you know, the, they may say to what do you, the workers and whatever, well, we've got a better deal for you than that. But really, they're just these big corrals. Right? They're just these, they use religion and government as these huge corrals, and they herd us into these corrals, and then they feed off of our energy. And they have us quarreling about which one is better than the other. Which vampire is the best? That's how this is, is about energy. Am I getting too nuts? <laughs> yeah, <I'm okay. laughs> so it's time for us to take responsibility for the change it is we say we want to see. Because in some kind of a way, what's going on here, the bad guys aren't going to change and they don't care how much we condemn them. They don't care what kind of names we call them. They don't care how we protest, demonstrate, any of it. They absorb it all. They sell us the water to drink on our protests. They sell us the magic markers. They sell us the cardboard to write our signs, man. I'm telling you, all right? <laughs> and if we cooperate, they sell us the permits. If we don't cooperate, then the police get to have war games. They absorb it all. Because we're falling into a pattern, it's a behavior pattern. And they know how to contain the energy. You you, <laughs> they know how to contain the energy. The thing that they fear the most. See, some of the thing that they, if there's anything that the predator class fears, it's a clear thinking human being. It's the only thing that they fear. Why do you think they spy on everybody the way that they do? It's because they're afraid somebody might start thinking out there. And that's the only thing that they fear, is because we're now, we're now cutting off the energy for them to feed off. We still got to participate, but we don't have to believe them. It's how we think. We have to take responsibility for thinking for ourselves because, you know, it's convenient to have a bad guy to blame. It's, it's very convenient, but it doesn't change anything. And I think when we blame the bad guys, when we go out and we blame the bad guys, but we're still disrespecting ourselves by feeding our energy to fears and doubts and insecurities when we're not sure, when we don't respect our Creator enough to truly understand our Creator didn't make us bad. That we have value. See, this is our way out, is understanding our own value as human beings. Because I think that whatever's going on in this dimensional reality, everything's about energy. Number one, I think that time is, this concept of time, I think it's on our side. I think the environment is on our side. The question to me is, are we on our own side? That's the real question. Are we giving ourselves an out because we got bad guys to blame? See, that's the danger about having the bad guy to blame because then we let ourselves off the hook. We don't have to give our best. We can, we can emotionally react and put our energy out there and create the illusion that we're really doing something besides feed our energy to the system, to the machine itself. Or we can take responsibility and be the change. You know, it's like we got to light it up one light at a time and we're all a light. Each one of us is a light. It's the energy we bring energy that we bring and understand that we bring energy we are alternative energy and we need to take ourselves seriously about this if we're gonna say to the bad guys all right you're you're you're, you're destroying the climate hey we're the ones buying the CDs and the iPods you know so we got to look at how all of this stuff works you know that we still got the convenience of somebody to blame but you know but they can only operate the way they operate if we're not taking responsibility ourselves
for ourselves. And I'm not saying trying to trash the iPods or any of that, but I'm saying, you know, what I kind of notice is the excessive need. They make a new iPhone 4 or something, you know, and how many people are out there getting it? The iPad. You know, they got a computer. They already got a phone. <laughs> All right, anyway, it's... <laughs> we, they have us this overconsumption. So if we're serious and we're for real about ch challenging who I'm going to call the bad guys, then we have to really become real to ourselves. And I think that that, that process happens by us recognizing that we are human beings. To think like a human being. Not to think like a minority or a gender or a class or a race. To think like a human being first. We are human beings first. And then everything else is secondary because if we weren't a human being, the rest, none of the rest of it would be there. But I'm asking, think about what, <laughs> just think. We can't, we will never outfight them. Get over that. We can outthink them. That's the only way out. And I'm going to say this about the fight thing. All right, now I want to throw this out there as long as it's, you know, it's about evolution, not revolution. It's about evolution. Life is about evolution. We are a part of the reality of life. Life is about evolution. We have had it imprinted into our consciousness to be revolutionary, but I'm telling you, it's about being an evolutionary. An evolutionary understands that it takes some time. An evolutionary knows it's what we truly put into it in the long run over time. The revolutionary has never ever won. The revolutionary has always had to become the state in order to protect their revolution. This is reality. This is reality. Tell me what revolution took place that did not have this, the, the human beings at some point in the history of it had to rise up and have another one. Things to really think about. Things to really think about. Evolution. We are a part of an evolutionary reality. Evolution means change and continue on. Revolution means you come back to the starting point. You always come back to the starting point. It's just a matter of how fast or slow you spin. Evolution. No offense. Thank you.